Uh, so I'm a graduate of the Textile Studies program. Um, and I graduated in 2011 and I focused, uh, majored in surface embellishment and print and dye. Uh, after I graduated, I did re-enroll for a third year so I could focus on weaving. And we also made my own kind of program where we took the craft fair pro um, project and we expanded it to do a whole uh, line. And I had my, own, my very own booth at the craft fair for the first time. So after I left school, uh, I was accepted to have a studio at the plantation. Um, and I was one of the first people. I was there for four years. Um, so the plantation was a great bridging program from school to like working in the craft sector. Um, while there, here's my first studio, then turned into Renee's studio. Um, while there, uh, I got to work with a lot of other emerging craft people and that was one of the most valuable things. Each, um, you got to see the way that they developed their businesses and um, how their products changed over time and how um, it grew. Uh, I was also exposed to people working in different mediums. So this is Graham and he's um, coding one of his blocks. I would never have gotten to know him or his process if I wasn't at the plant. Um, at the plant, it was also really important. Ooh, sorry. It was that really important um, to look after each other. Um, because you're starting out, you can't necessarily do it uh, full time right away. So you often have to have a part time job. And so when I was not there working my part time job, everybody else would be in charge of selling my work for me. And when they weren't there, I was in charge of selling their work for them. So I got experience in their process and their story and their um, inspiration, which helped me later on. Uh, the plantation also uh, helped you go to conferences or, uh, and they gave you workshops and they helped me go to the fiber conference this past October in Gross Morn. And while I was there during the very first industry day, I sat next to Ruth Weller, who at the time was working for Bonavista Creative. Um, she encouraged me to come to Bonavista. She said they might have a, a commercial space available. Come out and see what's going on. Um, so I did. And uh, I met with John Norman, the uh, COO, and uh, looked at the building that they had available. And it was gorgeous, and I wanted it. And this is what this is what they're doing. So Bonavista Creative um, is working to revitalize the downtown core in Bonavista, and they've been taking uh, vacant commercial buildings and restoring them and making them beautiful and useful again. This is not my building, this is Boreal Diner down the street. So once I decided that I wanted to move to Bona Vista, I had to figure out how I was going to do it. So I came back and I met with Chelsea Patterson at the YMCA and we worked together for six months to write my business plan. And with her help, um, I got a loan from Futurepreneur. And Futurepreneur is a nonprofit organization in Canada that helps young entrepreneurs get financing to start their business. Um, so once all that paperwork was all taken care of, um, I came back and I packed up my studio. That's everything in my studio on the sidewalk. And we uh, loaded it all up in the van and moved to Bonavista to open um, my shop, Tree Line. Um, so this, oh, geez. So, um, I wanted to, I decided to have a retail shop. Uh, I had so much experience uh, selling everybody else at the plants work. And I also have a lot of retail experience in my life. Ever since I was in high school, I've had some kind of part-time job and they've all pretty much been working for small companies downtown St. John's. So this is my building. Um, they had to hoist it up, move it back from the um, road um, but they did a fantastic job. So this is inside my, my shop. It originally was a dry goods store, and um, so they uh, kind of fixed it all up like it, it would have been back in the day. Um, it was really important to me to be able to uh, work on site. Um, the time at the plantation uh, taught me that the more people see you working, the more value that they put to your 
to your craft and the more that they're educated the more they're willing to pay the price it should be um, but I couldn't fill the store with only my stuff I couldn't produce it myself and you kind of want a variety not everybody's into brightly covered colored jersey scarves or uh, hand woven things so it was obvious to me that I would ask everybody that I've met at the plant uh, if I could sell their work uh, I knew their products uh, it was fine quality and it all kind of fits together um, what else we I also have some visual art from people that I know and a local local artists um, so it so these are the three different ceramic artists they're all completely different they all kind of fill a little void and it's um, they kind of round it out um, also price points so when you have a retail shop it's really important to like hit all the different price points this is a, a beautiful Susan Stevens necklace but it's three hundred dollars so that's not going to be for everyone so you want to have something that is in a lower price point that people can buy multiple of to bring home and to give as gifts um, these are running the goat books um, I don't know what I'm going to say about this so right now um, I have 17 people's 17 different craftspeople's work. Um, I've finished my first year and I have figured out that there are some holes and I need probably next year another five or six um, and that will work better. Um, so why did I pick Bonavista? Besides um, John Norman's Grand Seduction Tour, um, the <laughs> Bonavista uh, for me, it wasn't scary because I spent so much time on the peninsula as a kid. So we uh, we have family friends there, so there's a bit of a safety net. It's also not that far away. It's three and a half hours. And um, so that makes it easy if I do need to come to town or if I need to get supplies. There's three different buses that go in and out every day. So you can get things shipped to your door for not very much money. It's also good because your mom and friends will come visit on weekends. <laughs> Um, as I said, I always worked in retail, and if I was going to open my own shop, I would do it downtown, St. John's, but I probably couldn't afford the rent. The rent uh, in commercial space is huge, and compared to Bonavista, Vista, I, it was a no-brainer for me. Um, also, there's a lot of competition in St. John's. You have the Craft Council, the plant, Alexis, like and in Bonavista there's two other craft shops um, also it's a real town it has a fish plant a movie theater a high school a hospital a college and so there's people working there and living there all year round um, and there's also a lot to do in the summer the Garrick theater has music three or four times a week and they show commercial movies and they show local movies so there's always something going on for tourists, it has um, two major tourist attractions. It has the uh, Provincial Lighthouse and it has um, the National Historic Site, uh, the Rhine premises. So that draws in a lot of people. Last year, the lighthouse saw 55,000 people visit the site. And my shop is on direct route to the site and on the way back. Bonavista is also really good because there's room to grow. There's, um, with, the ta uh, with the Chamber of Commerce and working with Bonavista Creative, they really want you to expand your business and grow. And so now in October, we are going to go to PEI and we're gonna go and visit Belfast Mini Mills and they are a company that produce small scale fiber mill equipment. So we'll be able to process your cute little alpaca into um, usable wool uh, as well as sheep and you know all of all of the animals um, so we'd be able to uh, process fiber for farmers and if they wanted to buy it back that's or process it for them or we could buy their fiber and 
uh, either sell the uh, yarn or roving or use it to make uh, goods that we could export or sell in our shop. This is the building. Uh, it doesn't look like much now, but uh, once Bonavis Creative sprinkles their <laughs> pixie dust, it will be gorgeous. <laughs> the, um, so you can see the main entrance, and it, has, it will have two giant windows, and it'll have retail space. Um, and on this side will be kind of processing, and there's a huge sh uh, barn in the back that somehow they can move and connect. Um, so that would be good. And upstairs in the, in the building, there's this giant open room that would be great for teaching classes. So we could have uh, guest people or uh, a residency, like there's so many ideas. It's also on a, a huge plot of land, so we could have a dye garden where we could grow our own plants to use in the processing of our wool. So that's, that's it. Thank <laughs> you.